Hello, my dear student. This is Mohammad Maizul Haq Khan. How are you? I hope you are fine. Today, I would like to discuss about communication, chapter eight, business organization and management, second paper. From today's lesson, you will be able to learn about communication. That is, what is communication? Communication process, importance of communication, and types of business communication. What is communication? The term communication is derived from the Latin word communis, which means come on. Generally, communication is the transfer of information from a sender to a receiver, with the information being understood by the receiver. It is the process of passing information and understanding from one person to another. It is essentially a bridge of meaning between people. By using this bridge of meaning, a person can safely cross the river of misunderstanding that separates all the people. The purpose of communication is to spread organizational objectives and plans among the organization inmates to inspire them and to organize resources to achieve those objectives. In fact, the internal functioning of organization depends upon effective communication to a great extent because it integrates the managerial functions. So, communication is a two-way process because orders, directions, instruction, guidelines are directed or communicated downwards while suggestions, complaints, grievances, etc. are communicated upwards. This not only involves giving ideas but also receiving them. The communication process continues to the extent that ideas and messages are communicated and received. No business organization can exist without communication because it is necessary to have a congenial relationship among the employees working at different levels and that is why it is a continuous process. It may be formal or informal though it may be in different mediums. Process of communication. Communication process denotes combination or sum total of such interrelated steps or parts through which a message reaches a receiver from a sender. Communication process is initiated whenever the sender of messages desires to send some information or message to someone and this process ends with giving of a feedback by the receiver to the sender in context of the message received. The major elements of communication process include sender, message, channel or medium, receiver, feedback. Sender, a sender is one who sends messages to other. Communication originates from the sender. He realizes the need for conveying something to someone else. He has a purpose of communicating some information to one or more persons. Development idea by the sender. In the communication process, the first step adopted by the sender is that he develops some ideas regarding some message that can be sent. This stage is also called the planning stage of communicating process. At this stage, decision is made as to what message should be sent, where, to whom, and how. Then encoding. Encoding means putting message into code a message is initiated by encoding a thought. That is to arrange the message in different words or signs in a disciplined manner with a view to sending the mental concept of the message to be sent to the receivers is called encoding. This encoding might take the form of verbal words, gestures, facial expression, physical actions, or even artistic expression. Then message, a message is the output of encoding the process. This message must be unambiguously understood by the receiver. Message must be clear and precise. Then the channel or 
selecting media, the message is transmitted through the appropriate channel. The common channels include printed pages, face-to-face -face discussions. Since the choice of channels are many, the proper choice of channel is vital for effective communication. So, the way or means in which a message is reached to its receiver is called channel or the medium of message. Then transmission of message. Transmission of message means sending of the information or ideas already arranged as suitable for sending by the sender or communicator by using the selected medium following selection of the medium. At this stage of communication process, the message is sent to the receiver using the selected medium. Then the receiver, one to whom the sender's message is transmitted from the sender or one, the ones who receives the sender's message is called the receiver. That is, communication requires at least a couple of people, the sender and the receiver, one encodes and the other decodes the message. It will be complete when the receiver perceives the message intact. Receiving the message by the receiver, at this stage the receiver receives the message sent by the sender. Message may be received in different ways including hearing, reading, viewing and feeling or by any other means. Then decoding. Decoding refers to finding the meaning of something conveyed in code. It is the process by which the receiver interprets the message. Decoding is affected by several factors such as recipient's knowledge and past experience, personal interpretations of the symbols and gestures used, expectations and mutuality of meaning. That means at this stage the receiver transforms the message into his own ideas and concepts and analyze and realize it. Uh, hence, decoding is very vital for understanding the messages. Last, feedback. Feedback refers to the reaction of the receiver. It enables the sender to know whether the message, whether his message uh, is received and interpreted it correctly or not. Moreover, feedback enables the sender uh, to know the reaction of the receiver so that future communication can be modified if necessary. It also helps to check the effectiveness of communication. Next, types of business communication. Types of business communication is very important for creative questions. You have to give more emphasis on this topic. Communication can be classified into following kinds based on information. Based on information, communication is of two kinds vertical communication and horizontal communication. Vertical communication, when within an organization structure, communication takes place between the seniors and the subordinates. It is called vertical communication. On the basis of flow of messages, vertical communication is again divided into three types. Downward communication. Downward communication when leaders and manage, managers share information with lower level employees, it is called downward or top-down communication. In other words, communication from superiors to subordinates in a chain of command is a downward communication. This communication flow is used by the managers to transmit work-related information to the employees at lower levels. Ensuring effective downward communication is not always easy. Differences in experience, knowledge, levels of authority status make it possible that the sender and the recipient do not share the same assumptions 
or understanding of context which can result in messages being misunderstood or misinterpreted misinterpreted creating clearly worded unambiguous communication and maintaining respectful tone can facilitate downward communication next upward communication Upward communication is the transmission of information from lower levels of organization to higher ones. The most common situation is employees communication with managers. Managers who encourage upward communication foster cooperation, gain support and reduce frustration among their employees. The content such communication can include request estimations proposals complaints appeals reports and any other information directed from subordinates to superiors upward communication is often made in response to downward communication for instance when employees answer a question from their managers in this regard upward communication is a good measure of whether a company's downward communication is effective. Then diagonal communication. Diagonal communication is the sharing of information among different structural levels within a business. This kind of communication flow is increasingly the norm in organization. Since it can maximize the efficiency of information exchange, diagonal communication routes are the straight lines that speed communications directly to their recipient. The moment communication is necessary. Communication that zigzag along horizontal and vertical routes and are vulnerable to the schedules and availability of the individuals who reside at each level. Then horizontal communication, horizontal communication also called lateral communication involves the flow of messages between individuals and groups on the same level of an organization as opposed to up or down. Sharing information, solving problems and collaborating horizontally is often more timely, direct and efficient than upward or downward communication since it occurs directly between people working in the same environment. Communication within a team is an example of horizontal communication. Members coordinate tasks, work together and resolve conflicts. Horizontal communication occurs formally in meetings, presentations and formal electronic communication. Next, formal communication, communication basis on the based, uh, based on formality. Formal communication and informal communication. Communication which takes place following the rules and regulation customs and procedures of the organization is called formal communication. When a general manager tells the department has to attend a meeting, then this type of communication is called formal communication. Next, informal communication. Communication between a communicator and a receiver on the basis of spontaneous relationship between them without following any rules and regulation of the organization is called informal communication. The discussion between a general manager or and a sales manager while taking tea on the eve of the GM's retirement in, in an informal communication. Next, 
communication based on media that is verbal communication and non verbal communication verbal communication in this method of communication the two parties exchange their views ideas or the messages with the help of word of mouth such as telephone talk face to face talk lecture speech counseling uh, oral communication and its feedbacks are both instantaneous and direct but it might be time consuming and may it may end without results verbal communication is of two kinds written communication and oral communication written communication it is the type of communication which is produced in black and white the written communication may be conveyed through a letter report circular notice and so on it is a very common form of communication in most of the organization and is suitable for many institutions written communication is documentary uniformly transmittable and cheap but it takes up great physical space and the feedback is slow oral communication when information is exchanged through oral presentation of words it is called oral communication usually oral communication takes place through face to face conversation interview telephone conversation in case of oral communication direct exchange of information takes place between the communicator and the communicating that is receiver in modern business most of the communication takes place orally next non verbal communication non verbal communication is made by paralinguistic means such as body movements facial expressions gestures and all of them may support and contradict verbal communication giving rise to the saying that actions often speak louder than words so when communication is performed without using any form of written or oral language or word then it is called non verbal communication non verbal communication includes facial expression gestures touch silence eye contact appearance and dress next based on wideness communication is of two kinds one is internal communication another is external communication external communication when the communication uh, there is when the organization or an executive of it communicate with the some party outside of the organization due to the need of the organization that is called external communication by a party outside of the organization we may mean buyer supplier government agency competitors and so on then internal communication the communication which takes place within the organization or inside the organization among the employees of the organization is called internal communication next others mass communication communication system used for quickly sending the same message to a large number of people spread over a vast geographical area is called mass communication usually such type of communication takes place through radio television newspaper magazine basically such communication is publicized to the vast community on behalf of some organization then personal communication communication which takes place between two or more individuals on their personal life or issues is called personal communication
then interpersonal communication when communication take place within two uh, distinct uh, individuals regarding the sharing of uh, mutual information ideas and opinions is called interpersonal communication then routine communication the exchange of information that takes place every day to run the daily functions or activities of the organization are called casual or routine communication that's all about the different types of communication now importance of business communication exchange of information communication usually means exchange of information between two or more parties through communication different organization can exchange information and messages with different external internal parties this increases organizational dynamism and it becomes easier to achieve the goal of the organization then formulating and execution of plan communication facilitates in formulating of organizational plans and policy effectiveness of policy and plan depends on adequate and relevant information that is why in formulating plans and policies managers gather information from different dependable sources through various medium of communication then increasing employees efficiency communication plays facilitating role in increasing efficiency of the employees of the organization through communication employees can come to know about issues like objectives plans policy method of the organization besides different other useful issues like what to do when to do how is to be done what can be done can be communicated to them easily from time to time that enhances employees knowledge and efficiency in such matters then achieving goals effective remuneration renders or provides employees of all levels conscious of their responsibility as a result proper and timely execution of the programs and activities of the organization become possible which facilitate in achievement of organization goals solving problems through various communication channels managers can be informed of different occasional as well as non occasional problems as a result it becomes easier for them to make proper and timely decision by means of collecting necessary information and data from different sources improving industry relation communication also helps to improve harmonious industry relations industry relations means relations between the managers and managers managers and employees employees and employees success of the business organization mostly depends on harmonious industry relations communication ensures free flow of information between workers and management as a result doubt mistrust and conflict between workers and management is removed and congenial industry relations are established publicity of goods and sales in the present competitive business world all organizations are not equally able to sell their products in the market only those who are capable of maintaining fruitful communications with buyers consumers middle men can achieve business success in the competitive market in removing controversies effective communication ensures free or unrestricted flow of information between parties under transaction and business as as a result mutual mistrust misunderstanding conflict and hostility are removed easily enhancing employee satisfaction if unrestricted flow of information is maintained 
in the organization that undoubtedly ensures understanding between the workers and management. Such understanding increases employees' satisfaction. Then enhancing loyalty. Effective communication keeps managers aware of their subordinates by means of always providing them necessary information and data about them. Thus, this enables the managers to administer their subordinates properly. The employees in their turn can inform their bosses of their own needs and wants as well as complaints. In this way, employees loyalty to management increases. Education and training of employees. Training is to be arranged by the organization in order to enhance the knowledge and efficiency of doing a particular job. And in this regard, the authority of the organization is to inform the different rules, regulation, objectives, activities, responsibilities and duties to employees and in this regard there is no alternative of communication. Then motivating employees in case of Motivating the employees, communication also plays a significant role. Through motivation, it is possible to ensure the proper utilization, that is maximum utilization of employees of the organization. In case of giving motivation, it is needed to maintain direct relationship with the employees. As a result, it is possible to 